Let's stand and worship him tonight. set free. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Glad that I've been set free by the blood of the Lamb. Let's welcome the Lord into His house tonight. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Lord, that we are no longer bound by sin, but we are set free because of the blood of the Lamb that was shed on the hill called Calvary. Thank you for that tonight. I pray, Lord, as we're in this house, uh, that you will just move up and down the rows, up and down the pews, uh, in and out of the hearts and the lives of people that are here tonight. Uh, Lord, let us be able to say it's been good to be in your house tonight. Uh, minister to folks. Lead them and guide them and direct them. Uh, move around these tonight and we'll forever give you the praise of the honor and the glory for it in the name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen and amen let's worship together in song tonight
come before his presence with a song. He's the God of all creation, the author of salvation. All praise and honor to his name belong. Come on and praise the Lord, all ye people. Come on and shout aloud his praises to proclaim. Let every tribe and nation with love and adoration praise his holy name. Come on and praise the Lord, all ye people. Come on and shout aloud his praises to proclaim.
tonight say amen yes. amen truly not only is he all we need but he still is the way the truth and the life and the only way to God can you say amen for that tonight amen you may be seated in his presence tonight what a joy what a joy it is to have you with us in the house of the Lord on a Thursday night been a busy day on this campus today not only with all the normal activities but Earlier today, we had the funeral services for Sister Jewel Daltrey, and, and uh, thank you. So some of you are here as we celebrated her life today and, and laid her to rest in Winter Garden. I want to say thank you for your prayers, and the Lord touched us today, and, and I'm thankful that he is, uh, he's faithful, he's an on-time God, all those kind of things. And so I uh, just want to say thank you for praying for us today. Remember that family in your prayer. Uh, church tonight, church tomorrow night. We do have uh, the singing group, gospel group, highly favored, supposed to be with us tomorrow night. And so uh, don't forget about that. They will start right at 7 o'clock. So if you uh, want to enjoy all of that, you need to be here and be ready to go at 7 o'clock. They'll kick us off and uh, we'll take care of all of our praise and worship, all of our singing tomorrow night. They will handle. And then uh, our youth choir will sing right before Brother Jordan preaches tomorrow night. But we're looking forward to a great time tonight and tomorrow night. And uh, after service tomorrow night, we'll be headed up to Denny's. So if you want to go with that, just make plans. It is Dutch. You take care of your own bill. And, uh, but we love to fellowship with you tomorrow night around the dinner table. Uh, there at the local restaurant here in the Okoe area. Let me update you. Uh, a couple prayer requests that have come in. Brother Gene, I talked to Susie today and just hadn't heard in the last couple of days. And uh, so she, she texted me back and said that he's not feeling the best. Goes back to the doctor tomorrow. So let's just pray that God will be with him, touch him strengthen him and that family that they'll get a good report tomorrow and and whatever this feeling he's not having the best of feeling that god will just uh strengthen his he can do that tonight amen so let's pray for brother gene believing for a miracle there also we got a call this afternoon on sister lily and uh i haven't confirmed all these details but it seems to be enough that it's probably uh, very close to exactly what we were told but it seems that she uh, from what i was told had an aner aneurysm in her stomach went to Health Central Hospital, and they have flew her via Helivac to um, Shands Hospital in Gainesville. And that's all I know. So I've got a phone number. I'll try to reach out to her, and I may uh, sick Pastor Ricky on that in the morning, find out what's going on and what we can do to help. And so uh, just remember Sister Lily in your prayers, along with Brother Gene, that God will strengthen both of them. And, uh, you know, it's revival time, and people have been sick. People have been, have been attacked by the enemy, but we still had church. Amen. <laughs> God still met with us. God's still been faithful. The word's been preached. I've been encouraged. I've been renewed. And I'm excited about what God's going to do. Amen. So be with us tomorrow night, uh, Saturday, Primetimers event, Saturday afternoon. And we have uh, Junior Teen Talent Practice, I think, also Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday morning, Sunday school, 10 o'clock, 1045 worship service. No Sunday night service. So make sure that you're aware of that. Sunday school, Sunday morning only. Brother Jarman. Uh, we got seven days, almost eight days out of him this time. And so he'll be with us Sunday morning, preaching the Sunday morning service for pastor appreciation. And we'll have lunch together and, uh, and things of that on Sunday. And then next week, uh, our, our campus starting tomorrow. How many kids are glad to be on spring break? Amen. And so if you're public or private, I think you're on spring break. Start if you're Orange County. I think you're out tomorrow and all next week. So um, uh, be thankful for that. And... Um, we will let your parents love on you for the next few days. And, and by the time next Friday gets here, they'll be ready for you to go back to school. Amen. And so uh, uh, we are excited. The campus just breathed a sigh of relief when the dismissal time came today. And um, so uh, our staff will be here tomorrow, uh, most of them. And as uh, they close out quarter number three, I believe it is, and do report cards and all that stuff. So uh, uh, staff is working tomorrow. It's a regular day. If you don't tell them, I'll share a secret with you. Um, if they work really hard tomorrow and do a really good job tomorrow, we might close the office a, a, an hour or so, maybe 90 minutes earlier than we usually do. And uh, we'll let folks get out of here around 3 or, But they got to work extra hard. So don't tell them in case they don't work hard in the morning. We just won't make any hide or hair of it. Amen. 
And, uh, and, and we won't all get to leave because the singing group is supposed to be here at 4 o'clock uh, to set up and do a sound check and to feed with our, our system. So uh, all of us won't get out of here quite that early, but we, we may let them sneak out. And then next week, our staff will be on limited office hours, 9 to 3. Um, half of us are leaving town next week. We love you, um, but we're leaving town. Pastor Dustin and Miss Holly out for a few days. Pastor Rick and Sister Christy and Brother ML's out for a few days. Um, we were going to leave on Sunday, but we've changed those plans. We're not going to leave till Monday afternoon and uh, be back uh, late, late, late. Uh, we'll be back sometime in a few days, and uh, we're trying to keep things moving next door, and I just feel I need to be here Monday and probably back on campus Thursday and Friday. So we're going to get away for a few days, but uh, uh, Pastor Rebecca's preaching next Wednesday night. No classes, no clubs, no Wednesday night meals, uh, but she'll be ready to preach at 7 o'clock. So uh, be ready for that. I'm just excited about what God's doing. Amen. If Jesus comes, I'm going to heaven. But if he don't come, I'm going to work till he does. Amen. There's a lot to do in the kingdom of God, and I'm so thankful we get to be a part of it. All right, ushers, come on and get ready. we got tonight and tomorrow night to give up an offering. If you haven't given your, your special revival offering this week, you need to take care of that tonight. Uh, tomorrow night you might forget. So do that tonight, if you will, and uh, let's give a good offering. That man of God's preached to us, and, and uh, he really had to, to rough it today. Amen. I don't know if he... Yeah, I don't know what he did for lunch. I don't know what he did for breakfast. I don't know if he even left the room. He said, what do you mean, Pastor? Our schedule today with the funeral was just so uh, overwhelming. He told me last night, he says, let me just take care of myself Thursday. I said, no, we can't do that. He says, I'm telling you, I've been there. I've, he's a pastor. He knows. And you don't plan funerals in the middle of revival, but that happens sometimes. And he said, I said, well, let me text you in the morning, and I'll just see what he got here this morning, and I just felt we needed to do that. So I sent him a text this morning. Before 10 o'clock, and because my commitment was I would text him before 10 and let him know what if he needed to handle his own lunch. And, and so I, I, I did all that. And I called him on the way to the cemetery from the vehicle. I said, you got my, make sure you got my text and you're going to handle He said, I didn't get a text from you. I said, you didn't? Are you, are you serious? He said, I'm, I didn't get a text from you. I said, well, I sent one, and I'm on the way to the cemetery, and you need to take care of lunch on your own today. So... <laughs> And uh, so I felt bad for that, but that's the way it goes. Technology is a wonderful thing until it doesn't work. And um, so I said, well, just go eat and bring me a receipt, and we'll take care of it in the office. And uh, for all I know, he might have went out and had filet mignon today. I mean, I don't know. I would have put me by myself all day. I'd have racked it up big time. Amen? So, uh, but we're appreciative of him being sensitive and flexible with us. And, and uh, so we're reconnecting right now for tonight. And I believe that doesn't, that doesn't hinder the move of God. It doesn't hinder the spirit of God. And uh, I'm ready for what he has for us tonight. Can you say amen for that? Let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to give of our offering. Thank you for all that you've done for us, moving this place tonight. Lord, bless this offering to meet the needs of revival and expenses of this week, Lord, the travel of this week. And we we'll just believe it's going to be a, just a great week as we finish, Lord, tonight, tomorrow night. Move around these altars, save and sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we'll forever give you praise, honor, and glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said amen. 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 God bless you as you give. Youth choirs, the, uh, the ushers pass your pew. Find your way on up to the choir. Can you say amen? amen? 
Amen. It has been good to have Brother Jarman with us this week. And after this youth choir finishes, uh, he'll be coming to minister to us the word tonight while they're finishing getting ready. It's good to have you tonight. Good to have Sister Hurley with us and Shirley with us. And it's just good to be in the house of the Lord. Some have been working late this week. They're in tonight. Let me just say thank you for making the commitment to be in church. It's important. We come to the house of the Lord. And I'm thankful that you're here tonight. Continue to worship together as this good choir sings.
telling you he's good tonight isn't he i believe if in order we put our hands together and just give the lord a great big hand clap of praise amen he brought you through the fire i'm telling you, you can say amen tonight just an honor tonight to be in the house of the lord i appreciate the mercy of god his goodness and his grace appreciative for what i feel in my soul tonight yeah, I want you to feel sorry for me. I ate lunch by myself today. But I tell you what, I was there, you know, and waiting on the food to come. And I just began to meditate on the Lord. And I started weeping, sitting on the little bench there in the booth. And I said, God, if there's anything we need in this hour, we need revival. I'm not talking about a series of meetings or an influx of people. But what we need is a monsoon of God's power to fall in the church. You see, that word revival originated from a Greek word, viva, which means to give life. It's got a small prefix, re, which means to start over or to do it again. My prayer tonight is, God, will you do it one more time? Wilt thou not revive us again? 
Oh, God. I'm telling you what, I thank God for what I feel right here tonight in this church. Amen. We've all been down that road of discouragement. Come on, I want to see some honest hands tonight. Been there, you've faced it maybe day in, day out, weeks at a time. But I know a friend of mine tonight went into a deep state of depression. He said, all I need, Brother Jarman, is for God to make himself real to me. A preacher that was pastoring a great church went off, I don't know, just woke up one morning, things wasn't right. But he told me the other day, he said, you know, I want to tell you, man, God's faithful. I want to tell somebody tonight, God is faithful. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He said, lo, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. There's sometimes i got to remind myself of those very words. Where you at? You ever ask him, where are you? And it seems like at that point, we start on a journey. The song said, we're all on a journey, and we're called to walk by faith. Thank God. I'm glad he's mindful of us. Man, when I'm not what I ought to be, he's still God. When I'm at my lowest, he's still God. When it seems like everybody has forsaken me, he's still God. He's got a hand that's outstretched over the balconies of glory. Says, all you got to do, son, is reach up to me. Yeah. Woo! And I'll pull you out of your dilemma. Is there anybody here who's found him faithful? Yeah. Just say amen. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. I'm glad I can feel this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> say amen. amen. I'm telling you, hadn't been by the uh, last night or the other night I went to Walmart. And I walked in, there was a guy had a big red dot on his forehead. I said, I'm glad I ain't got one of them on my head. Amen. I can feel that Holy Ghost on him. You know what I can feel? Woo! Amen. Praise God. Good to see you tonight. I pray that you've come expecting the Lord to do something. Amen. Anybody believe there's a famine in the land? Amen. I'm not talking about for hunger, for food, or thirst for water. But there is a famine. I believe in the church tonight. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to go, if you will, to the book of Ruth. Ruth chapter number one. <laughs> I want to begin with verse number one. If you found it tonight, would you say amen? amen? Stand to your feet, please. Let's read the word of God. Notice how it reads. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Imelech. The name of his wife was Naomi. The name of his two sons, Maelon and Chilion, Euphrates of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into a country of Moab and continued there. Himalek, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. They took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. Maelon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. And she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard that the country of Moab, how that the Lord had visited his people, and given them bread. Listen, there's a rumor that there's bread in the house of God. I said, there's rumor tonight that there's bread 
in the house of God. Let's go to verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, my people, and thy God, my God. Verse 19. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the city was moved about. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. <laughs> and I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call me Naomi, seeing the Lord had testified against me. The Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. That is there for a reason. Listen to what it said. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. If you would tonight, stretch your hand toward this pulpit. Let's pray and ask God for his anointing. God, if there's anything in our life that oughtn't be there tonight, I pray, God, that you'd move by your power, move by your great spirit tonight. And God, I will forevermore be careful to give you all the praise. And I'll give you all the glory, for I do pray and ask it all. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray. And would everybody shout amen. Amen. Look to your neighbor tonight. Tell them God's got just what you need right here tonight. Amen. I want to preach to you tonight, if the Lord would help me, on this thought tonight, a journey to Moab and back. You see, there was a famine in the land, and the people began to get the jitters. You know, whenever we're not protected like we feel like, we should be. We seem to get the jitters sometimes. All right. Anybody ever had the spiritual jitters? Come on. I'm not going any further until everybody gets with me. It's going to be a long night here tonight if you don't hurry up. Amen. <laughs> so they began to get the jitters because it was a, a projected famine in the land. And this was a MLX case being made aware that the famine that was in that land, not that it had been reached in Bethlehem quite as yet, but such a measure, and everywhere everybody else was, there seemed to be a problem. There was something going on. Amen. But there was one in the land. He had hurried up, made a decision, and said, I've got a sojourn. Out of here, I'm gonna br I'm gonna leave for a little while, just briefly, but I'll make my way back. You know, it seems like today that is uh, the solution for the norm. It is not with so many Christians today, but for us to realize that there is an enemy who uses a projected famine. Come on, somebody, to chase people out of the way and cause them to get the jitters. And often, it's the Amalek of the church. His name, my God, is. Is king. They've made a statement, my God is king, but I believe that something else is going on. You know you have to be very wise tonight, Brother Thomas, to realize that something is not exactly right. Things are not like they used to be. Come on here. Not only in the world, but in the church as a whole. Things are not exactly how they used to be. Amen. There was a time we sought God. We looked for the face of God. And if God didn't show up, we stayed down until he did show up. Come on, yeah. Say amen. amen. Listen, Elimelech's name means my God is king. They made that statement, my God is king, but come on. Hurry up. We got to get out of here. Something ain't right. 
Let me tell you something. If God's able to save your soul, baptize you in the Holy Ghost, he's able to keep us tonight. If you believe that, say amen to me. It seems like oftentimes the Spirit whispers in our ears, but are we willing to hear what God is saying to the heart and the souls of men and women tonight that God says, hold on, I want to prove to you. Say amen. amen. Brother Thomas said a while ago, he said, that song is a Ronnie Jarman song now. I don't care. Amen. Every time you listen to it, every time you sing it. Say, that boy from Alabama, Mississippi, he likes that song. Amen. I'm telling you what's the truth. And I want you to notice right here. If we are confident of a better thing that's concerning ourselves tonight, I believe it will be accompanied with salvation. Amen. In the book of Hebrews, we find so many encouraging words. But I want you to notice verse number one. From Bethlehem to Moab, things considered to be a decision I've got to go there. Have you ever seen anybody that said, I just can't stick around here? Got to get out. i got to find that the grass is greener on the other side. Friend, can I tell you tonight, it's not always greener on the other side. There's pleasure in sin for a seed. Amen. I said there's pleasure in sin for a season. Be careful what you allow to give audience to. Amen. Be careful what we call entertainment. Tonight, I'm telling you, somebody said, well, I just got word today. You know, a little upset. Wanted to call the guy. Said, no, I ain't going to do it. If he ain't happy, let him go. Well, right off this, I mean, woke me up early. I'm telling you what's the truth. She said, Ronnie, have you heard? And I'm going to be very, very careful. Ain't going to call nobody's name. Uh, you didn't have to worry about all that. You just skin it back and let it go. Amen. I mean, you pull the hammer back and let's get it going. But I've got to be careful. I am of the persuasion tonight. If a man's not happy where he is, dear God, get somewhere and get happy. Where God's feeding you, where God's taking care of you. Come on, somebody. Say amen to me. Hey, I want to tell you right here, you've got something here that a lot of churches are starving for. We need the power of God. We've got to have it. Amen. It's not maybe so. It's not a, a preconceived idea. We've got to have the presence of God Almighty. We've got to have it or else we die. You know, there was a time that we held. You know, I was studying today. I was trying to, you preachers, you know what I'm talking about. I uh, running over this. I read where one daughter-in-law kissed her mother-in-law. And I said, well, I can preach on a kiss without conviction. Just couldn't nail that down. Couldn't get settled on it. Next to really started looking at there's, there's a possibility, there's rumors of bread in the house of God. But it seemed like the more I dug, the more I studied, it said, no, somebody's on a journey. And they sang that song tonight. That was confirmation for me. If nobody else, it was confirmation for me. We are all on a journey. Amen. And we are called to walk by faith. I pray tonight that God come by here and God give us a burst of faith like we've never had. Come on, somebody. Amen. Listen to me. Consider the family, the loved ones that are involved. Malon, Chilion. Amen. The word, the name Malon means sickly. And Chilion means wasting away. They were weakly. They were not up to the trip. But consider what they did. They left the house of bread and going to a land of Moab, a place of desolation, the house of bread, and they went to Moab, which means the perhaps of my father. A lot of people say, well, perhaps I'll go over here. And you know, and one of my former, former pastors, not the one where I am now, there was a guy I had to deal with him. Wasn't no conversation, buddy. I dealt with him. 
Come on here. You know, kind of like in school, you wish sometimes you will just, you know, turn your face and walk, and you can't do that in church. And I told him, I said, listen, man, I need you, I want you. But if you ain't going to line up, Come on. Come on. you don't want to hear what I told him. But, Brother Jarman, you're the pastor. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I've got more than one sheep to look after. Come on, somebody, say amen to me. We're on a journey from the house of bread to the perhaps of my father. I believe tonight that everybody here knows what it is to be touched by God. Come on, say amen to me. I want to ask you right here tonight, have you been touched like you know that God can touch you, like you know that God will touch you? Glad God of heaven, we must shake ourselves tonight and decide what we're going to do. You know, it's up to you. You can get them in. We don't need a silver-tongued orator. We don't need a great pulpiteer. What we need tonight is a stir in the whole house. Say amen to me. Stir the whole house. A journey. I never will forget a few years ago now. I sat on the front row in our church and just about lost what I had with God. On the front row. And I got so defensive. Man, people are telling me, Brother Ronnie, what's wrong? I said, ain't nothing wrong. Might be wrong with you. Come on, you can always tell when it ain't right. When it's not that love, you know, and you you just want to... You want to be kind and gentle with everybody. Have you ever had anybody just got under your skin? Come on. Come on, get me out here. Have you ever had anybody that just got on your nerves? I heard my wife say one time, you're on my last nerve. And you don't know if she's talking to me or my children. But I heard her say that. And I thought, "Uh uh-oh, they've gone too far. We've gone too far here. But I believe tonight that we've got a God that loves us. Oh, my God. Oh, he cares about us. He desires to hear from us. Did you know he desires that communication? He desires us to have that relationship with him. Notice this. The infamous words of return. And verse 21 said, I went out full, but I came back empty. My God, somebody's going to leave here full tonight. It may be you, Brother Titus. I pray today God fill that boy to an overflowing. Baptize him in the Holy Ghost. Hey, God's still baptizing folks in the Holy Ghost tonight. Come on, everybody. Come on. I said, I'm a tongue talker. Ain't ashamed of it at all. My wife was in Sam's the other day. Anybody here go to Sam's? Be careful. You don't always get the best deal at Sam's. I just had to say that. Oh, we got department stores closing. My wife called me today. She said, Ronnie, you're not going to believe this. Toys R Us are closing. So... You know, that might mean something to the CEO or all those that may be out of a job. Said, you know, Target, some of them, a lot of them are closing down. I don't know how it is here, but on every available corner at home, in Mobile, Pascagoula, Moss Point, they're putting up Dollar General stores. Somebody said, well, I'll just go to Dollar General. I don't have to go to Walmart. Oh, yes, you will. If you go to Dollar General, you're going to Walmart. Because they own them all. Come on, say amen to me. You know, it's something how we've allowed a little bitty thing. You know, we said, oh, yeah, we'll, man, that's so convenient. But it's closing down the mom and pop store. There's those that... How did I get off on this? I even heard the other day they're going to start selling produce at the dollar store. Run down to the dollar store and give me a cup of tomatoes. Usually you just get a ball of thread and a needle at the dollar store. Then they started selling milk. You know, things begin to progress. 
You know, we started out with a little lady, a little, a little girl, and our mother just twinkled her nose. That was okay. We just sat down. We watched that boy. I'm telling you, it was good. And we all oh, ain't it cute. Darren come in from work. Samantha Wiggler knows the house is clean. Be with. Come on, if you want to, that's what it is. Samantha and Darren and uh, the little baby, Tabitha, I believe was her name. She was a witch as well. We sat down. We watched that ate popcorn to it. Now look what we've got. We've got Harry Potter that's pushing everything. The light is against the darkness. It's always been that way. Can I tell you tonight we're on a journey, folks. We've got to make it in. And it's not going to be over until we hear the pearly gates click behind our heels tonight. Somebody's got to be real. Somebody's got to be sure. Make up your mind tonight. Be a child of God. Listen. It's how far we've come. We're on a journey. From be with you, Harry Potter. Now we're at the twilight. Oh, they try. You, you, you got to get some good. There ain't no good in it. But we're on a journey. There's a, there's, there was a time that we'd pay the price for revival. We'd seek God. We'd get in. We'd dig. But we just thought, well, that's it. we'll just sojourn for a little while. If God moves, good. If he don't, well. Oh, my God. We've got folks that will darken the door of the church and they're looking for something. We're needing God. Amen for an answer. Did you hear me? Here this lady is. She's been out there to Moab. Her sons have died. Her husband's died. And she said, what am I going to do? How in the love of God can I tell you? God has got your back tonight. He knows what you're facing. He knows what you're going through. All you got to do is give up and let God God, take over. Somebody raise your hand and shout hallelujah. 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 You know the story. They make their way back. They said, what are we going to do? She said, well, I remember there's one here by the name of Boaz. They hambled back in. You know the story. They come back in, you know, and He's laying down, taking a nap. She, he throws his apron over. She's laid down beside him. She's needing something. You know, when somebody gets desperate with God, they'll try to lay down beside him. I said they'll lay down beside him because they want to get next to him, want to get right up beside him. You know what he does. Thank God for that sandal covenant. He took that sandal off and he gave it to her and it says, I'm going to give you this shoe and when I give you this shoe, you ain't got nothing to worry about because I am the nearer kinsman redeemer. Come on, somebody. Did you know God's already got a way? He's got it mapped out for your path, but we've got to be willing to follow the footsteps of the Lord. Oh, is she glad tonight? He said, the steps of a righteous man, they are ordered by God. Somebody raise your hand and just begin to praise him tonight I've seen family struggle I said I've seen family struggle not knowing where the next meal is coming from but they said I'm going to decide to follow God oh come on here it might not be the brightest path it was during the time of the barley harvest Boaz tells him, he said, listen, I got some friends of mine that are coming, and I want y'all to drop some handfuls on purpose. Handfuls on purpose. Oh, my God, have you ever been to a place where you're just trying to wonder, God, what are we going to do? What are we, what are we going to do? I've been faithful. You know, I believe why God draws his hand back on some folks, they don't pay their tithe faithfully. All right. Come on. They make nine hundred dollars and they give God God twenty. That ain't tithe. Tithe is one tenth of all that you possess. Ooh. I'm trying to 
I'm preaching here. Is that all right? I'm teach preaching. If there's a such thing as God, teach preaching. Now somebody say, "Well, you ain't talking to me. You ain't talking to me. I I, I pay my tithes." How can God use a man? How can God use a lady that's a robber? That's not faithful. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, I preach this at my church. And they, they puff up. That's all right. Puff up or bust. Don't make me no difference. See, right. man, it's the truth. That's, that's the book. That's the, and we want why? Why am I having it so hard? Why am I having it so hard? I don't understand. And did you give God what belongs to Him? Here was Ruth and Naomi. You you read it when I read it. She went out full, but she came back empty. You know what? You glad we've got a heavenly Father that when we walk out empty, oh, He'll fill us up when we get back. Oh yes, my God. Covenant, man, you study that covenant. That it makes me nervous preaching in front of Brother Dustin. I know he studies it, man. I say, ooh, I better not say nothing foolish, nothing off the cuff. He'll correct you on it. Oh, he scares me. It makes me think he will anyway. The other night, I said, you know, I think about that the other day. You, you read? I said, did I say something wrong? Was I chasing a rabbit? And, just get a little bit of Ronnie Jarman theology in there. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, Brother Rick. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I mean, man, you forget about uh, Adams Clark. You forget about Matthew Henry. <laughs> See, man. You just chase that rabbit. Feels so good. You just. <laughs> but that salt covenant. Have you ever studied that out? The, the covenant. They carried a pouch with salt in it. And the covenant was, you mix your salt with mine, and I'll mix yours with mine, and it's, we'll be bonded together, the promise of covering. Amen. As long as our salt is mingled together. You know, when you mix it together, you can't separate it. Come on, somebody. Oh, aren't you? We're all on a journey from the journey from Moab and back. My God, remember, all you've got to do is make up your mind right here tonight. Say, God, it's been a long time. It's been a hard place, but I'm going back to the house of bread. I've got to go back to Bethlehem. I've got to get back to the house of God. Chapter 4. Naomi's land that could have been lost was unproductive. Now it would produce great satisfaction for her. And Ruth, her daughter-in-law, became a monument of bad memories. Now we become a blessing, amen, of untold sorts. I believe tonight we can make a full recovery. I've got new, you remember that song we used to sing? Well, I went to the enemy's camp and I took back what he stole from me. Oh, God. I took back what he stole. Anybody here ever stole anything from you before? I never will forget. I was a young boy, a little bitty boy. That's been a long time ago. I was a little bitty boy. I remember coming in from school. My mom was sitting on the front porch. She was crying. I said, Oh, what's wrong? She said, son, I was gone 20 minutes. And while I was gone, somebody broke in the house. They went through, stole this, stole that. And I, I, I had an old Timex watch. And I remember I had one of them tune bands, one of them big wide hippie bands, what I call it. But my mama called it that anyway. What, why are you wearing that hippie band? Because I like it. It had three straps on it. It had a little Timex watch right in the middle of it. It looked a little goofy. And you know that man broke in, took my watch. And I got that. I said, oh, I can just see my hands on him. He stole my watch. But there was something about sitting there 
knowing that your home had been violated, somebody that had come in and walked through your stuff, uh, mingled through your house, uh, can I tell you tonight, the devil is on the rampage. Uh, the Bible said he walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Stay on your guard. Keep your mind on God. Let him know that you mean Ben to come on here. Say amen to me, sir. enough of that these days. Right. You know why the devil become religious? Right. Come on. Boy, I could preach that and make about half of y'all mad right now, but I'm not. <laughs> I told my wife today, I said, man, it seemed like I just got here yesterday. And now it's almost over. You know, it's places like this I love to go to. I mean, where you, you just, you know, keep your ears back and go. Amen. Just preach. <laughs> Listen, Naomi's arms was placed, in her arms was placed a baby boy, a grandson, by the name of Obed. Amen. And the ultimate result of Boaz getting rid. Obed would be the restorer of life to Naomi, her grandmother. I'm not a grandpa yet. And I better get a son-in-law before I get a grandbaby. All right. Come on. I'm telling you, it's, it's cute. Get you a little boyfriend. But ladies, let me tell you something. If he ever steps out of the way, put him in the highway. All right. Come on, y'all. I don't care. He wants to kiss on you all the time. Tell, uh-uh. You know, I never kissed my wife until we were married. Think about that. Every other time I kiss her, she's my girlfriend. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Brother Jarvin, I had you up here. Now you're down here. <laughs> Say amen right there, somebody. I tell you something. It's in them dark places. That's where the devil will come out. You hear me? I'm telling you what's the truth. Amen. When that baby boy was born, could you imagine the lie? I imagine she said, Oh, I sure wish Papa was here. Papa could hold this baby and even my boys if they'd have been here. But we can't recall that. You see, somebody said that's memories of yesterday. But aren't you glad that God don't forget? Come on, somebody. Oh, I feel like having church here tonight. If five people get with me, I promise you, God will come by here. God will shake us tonight. Stir us like we have never been stirred before. The journey. Sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it's not joyful. You go through hardships. You face difficulties. Circumstances beyond your control. You never will forget. I walked up to a car and saw my boy in that car dead. I thought to myself, what? Several preachers come to me during that time. We were mourning. I said, Brother Jarman said, don't ever ask God why. I said, why? Why not ask him why? Jesus asked him why. He said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Come on, sir. But you know, I know where he is tonight. Don't have to guess. I know where he is. That night we stood beside that coffin of a 10-year-old man. His teacher stood beside me. She said, Mr. Jarman, I want to tell you something. He was quite a guy. He said, a couple of months ago, he said, I saw a change in him. And that's the school teacher coming to me. Tell me I saw a change in a 10-year-old boy. He's living right. They're going to live right. Yeah. All right. They watch us fall and flumber, flop, and get up and get down, fall in and out, wonder what. Well, I just want to make sure. Right. 
Well, look what we're producing. Look what's, look what, oh, come on, y'all. Come on. We're, I, I, we're all from the south here. Oh, come on now. Hey, listen to me. Uh, does anybody know what a whooping is? You know, up north they call it spank. I'm going to spank you. I'm going to pop you. I'm gonna... My daddy used to tell me, boy, I'm going to whoop you. And when he said, I'm going to whoop you, you know what he said? I'm going to half kill you. He said, I'll do this because I love you. Come on, say amen. Just go over to me. I love you. <laughs> say amen. Sometimes he said, I'm going to half kill you. I thought, dear God, why don't you just go ahead and kill me? <laughs> I'm going to half kill you. I'm going to half kill you. Don't half kill me. Just let me stay alive, please. Listen. There's some things we got to do as a church. As monuments, markers in our minds. Amen. God has restored us. He's put a, a fresh touch on us. Obed would be the nourisher, the nourisher to her, holding this baby in her arms. The neighbors named him Obed, which means worshiper, a sign of full recovery. When you have come through all that you have because of bad things, yet now you can still worship God. Amen. I told him, I said, listen, I don't know why I've gone through this. I don't understand why God has done what he's done to my family but I do know one thing he told me in his word he would never leave me he would never forsake me he said he'd always be there yes. the night I walked out of the hospital in Jackson, Mississippi my heart torn in a million pieces they're telling me my oldest daughter said she'll never walk said she'd never talk possibility she'd be blind I said, no. The first day I walked into Shands Hospital in Jacksonville, Florida, I walked in. The doctor met us there, had us in a trauma unit. My wife's in the floor crying. I asked that doctor, I said, sure, I want to ask you one question. Have you ever had anybody with this kind of an injury make a comeback? He looked at me, he looked at my wife in the floor. He said, no, sir, not a one. I could have fell down there with her, but I looked at it. I said, sir, you get ready for your first one. She's coming back. She's coming back. I'm going to stand on the word of God. He said, healing belongs to us. It seemed like from that day on, it was a long, drawn-out deal, long, drawn-out process. We're in, we're in Shan's hospital for 17 days. They've got a trick in my daughter's throat. And the doctor said, if we have to leave it in one more day, we'll have to go in and do something else, cut something, and she will never sing again. But I want to take, can I report to you tonight, the doctors don't know everything. Oh, I thank God for what they do know. But they don't know everything. They don't have the last say. God is our redeemer. Somebody here better shout amen. He is your redeemer. He's a promise keeper. He will lay you down. He'll bring you out of your dilemma, out of your trial. He'd often make his way to Jackson to see us. He'd come there, sit down, stay all day long. I'd never been so glad to see somebody in all my life. If you know Brother Doug, I'm telling you, he is a comedian. He talks about poor Brother Lamar like he was adopted. But we know who the better one is. See, man. <laughs> Not about that. I don't care. <laughs> I'd say if they were sitting here. We were there one day, and you know, one of our long days. That morning, me and my wife swapped. They'd take Brittany to the rehab twice a day. Wheel her down at 9, come back and get her, take her back at 1 o'clock. My wife said, I'll go down with her today. You just go with the late shift. I said, no, I'm going to go this morning. And you go to this evening. She said, okay. So we go down there and they, I mean, she's bent over. She's 
And it's, I mean, it's bad. Slobber just drools out of her mouth. I'm a wife and don't know want anybody to look at her. But we take her in that gym. They unbuckle her, sit on this mat, and they start throwing those balloons at her. I said, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? So we're trying to get her range in motion where she can start moving. I said, she's laying on her side. You know, I started to get, they were getting under my skin. They were doing what they had to do. They had to do. So we started to leave that morning. And over against the wall, there were two little bitty bars about that high, about that wide. And I asked that lady, I said, ma'am, how long will it be before we get to get on those bars? She said, sir, it's going to be a long time. And I looked at her, I said, that's what you think. I went back to that room. I started calling everybody I could think of. Hey, we need a miracle today. I said, I want you to call everybody that you know and tell them the Jarmans need a miracle today. I'm looking around that gym. I said, what about this? You know, you when, you, when you're down, you got to pick yourself up. The Bible said that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Boy, you can make people shout. They get $500 extra. They go out to the mailbox. Buck all the way in, but you let them go out there hey, two days before the bills, and there ain't nothing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm encouraging myself. We're fixing to walk out of here. It wouldn't surprise me if we walked out today. I said, man, we won't be long. We're going to run all this through here. You can throw the balloon. She's going to bat them back to you. We started to walk out of that gym. That little therapist, you know, she. She said, Mr. Jarvin. I said, yes. She said, I want to ask you a question. I said, go ahead. She said, you've either got to be a used car salesman or a preacher. I said, I'll take number two. I said, this girl right here is going to shock us. Get up, buck dance right there. <laughs> sure enough, Brother Doug comes along. We're sitting in the room. My wife said, I'll go and take her down there. It's 1 o'clock, you know. They, they don't never get in a hurry in the hospital. You're at their mercy. I'm telling you, I laid down flat on my back for three hours waiting on the doctor to take my gallbladder out. down to the gym. They're not gone. Fifteen minutes. The phone rings. Ronnie! Get out here! What is wrong? She said, bring the video recorder. Didn't have that little job you put in your hand. Had that big old RCA. You had to you strap in, you felt like a newsman. Say amen. I told Brother Doug, I said, come on. We got to get down there to the gym. She told me to get the video recorder, so let's go. He got up and said, dear God, let's get down there. And we did. We sat there at the elevator waiting. I want you to see this. Just the day before 9 o'clock that day, they said it'd be a long time. The door of that elevator opened up, and my daughter come walking out. Say amen to me. Hey. Yeah, you know, if God did it then, he'll do it tonight. Somebody raise your hand. Give God a praise in this house. God hasn't changed. Yes. My wife's are holding on to him. The next day we go back to the gym. I walked in, that lady said, I don't want to hear it. A journey from Moab and back. Be honest with you. Going through this, I felt like throwing in the towel. I walked outside that hospital one night. And this is what I said. I said, God, you've got my undivided attention. I said, what is it you want me to do? Where is it you want me to go? I said, God, I'm ready to go to India. 
I'll go to Africa. You tell me. I just want to hear from you. There's nothing like not hearing the voice of God for a long time. God just don't talk to me no more. He, he, he yearned for that. He yearned for We've got to hear the voice of God first. Yes. Like thunder, we've got to hear it. And I walked out that night. And I said, God, where are you? I said, I pick up my Bible to read. And it feels like I'm just reading another book. I try to pray. And it seems like you're a thousand miles from me. God, would you please just talk to me? Yes. It didn't thunder. Small voice. He said, Weeping may endure for the night, but joy is going to come in the morning. Come in the morning. Oh my God. Oh God. You may be crying tonight, but I want to tell somebody tonight joy is going to come in the morning. Weeping will endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I've got to close. Maybe tonight you've made some bad choices. It's led you from the house of bread. The strong redeemer, I believe, is here tonight to make old bed a part of your life, to bring restoration to you. Church, listen to me. Please, let's don't go to Moab. Remember, Moab's on the plateau between the Dead Sea and the Arabian Desert. Where nothing grows. Nothing grows. Moab was birthed out of a backslidden condition. Moab is still the enemy of true righteousness. James chapter 4 and verse 4. And Moab is the place of unfulfilled visions. The Bible said without a vision, the people perish. I want to ask you, I want to challenge you. Everybody in this room tonight, I want to challenge your heart. Have you been everything that you could be? How many souls have you won to Christ in the last year? Don't answer. Just ponder in your mind. We're here for a reason. We're all on a journey. And we're called to walk by faith. Is there anybody here who brought you through the fire? Say amen. amen. You tell me if I knew that song, I'd sing it. Tonight you're here. And you say, Brother John, I don't know why I don't understand it. The things that were going, the things that were growing. I'm not sure what they've got. But tonight, I've got to get back to the house of bread. I'll assure you tonight that he's left handfuls on purpose. Boaz told those gleamers, said, whatever you do, you pick up what you can, but you leave handfuls on purpose. I'll have some more coming in, but you leave it there. That's provision. I can tell tonight that God's provided for every one of us in this room. He said it's because of him that we move and we breathe and we have our being tonight. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're up against. I don't know what you're facing tonight, but he does. He knows exactly where you are. He knows the condition of our families. He knows the condition of our spiritual life. And I believe it's God's will that we all get up close to him tonight. And it's your choice. It's your opportunity. And I want to give you a chance. Brother Jarman, I've got to get back to the house of bread. Would you bow your heads, please? Father, once again tonight, I've done my very best. Dear God, I've delivered my heart to this thy people. Lord, these are your people tonight, and they're precious. And I pray tonight that you'd walk among us as earnest as you can, Lord. Please reveal yourself to us. Lord, I'm careful tonight to give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. I thank you for what you've done thus far in this meeting. But tonight, God, I'm asking you to have your free course in this altar tonight. 
that man, that woman, that boy, or that girl tonight that needs a touch of God. Lord, I pray that you dispatch a band of angels tonight. Bring blessings. Bring healing touches. Bring encouragement tonight, God. God, maybe there's those here tonight that have lost their joy. Would you bring joy to us? In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus tonight. Would you stand to your feet, please, everybody that will. I'm not going to single you out tonight. I'm not going to find your category. But tonight, if you're here and you're sincere with God, I don't know your mistakes. I don't know your faults. I don't know your failures. It's not my business. But tonight, if you're here tonight and you say, Brother Jarman, right here tonight, I've got to make up my mind to make heaven my home. I've got to make it. If that's your prayer, I want you to get out from where you're standing right now. Come, let's find us a place to pray. I want to make it to heaven. I've got to make it. Somehow, some way. I've got to make heaven. Come on, it's up to you. It's your choice. Find you somewhere to get along with him. We're going to pray for each other in just a moment, but right now I want you to pray for yourself. Come on, that's it. God help me tonight. He's got his hand outstretched. He's got his hand outstretched just for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, help me tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, Jesus. Help us tonight, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we humbly pray. We do bow, Lord, in your holy presence.
I'm still praying. I want them to pray, but I want to pray for folks tonight. Just believe the Lord a little while ago. Just kind of put that in my heart, and I don't know where everybody's at. I'm your pastor. And I know where some of you are at. I know where some of us are at. But I believe we don't have to stay in Moab. We can get back to the house of bread. Amen. And they're going to sing, and we're going to pray. If you want us to pray with you, for you, maybe for you or a need in your life, You'll just come line across the front of this church and get ready. And we're going to come and we're going to pray. And we're going to believe God's going to be faithful. God's going to show up. God's going to give you joy in the midst of sorrow. God's going to get you out of Moab and get you back to the house of bread. God's going to move in whatever it is. I don't even have to know the details. God knows. Amen. I don't even have to know the details. I know a God that's able. And if he'll do it for those we read about in that book, he'll do it for those that have testified about it tonight, he'll do it for us. And I want to do that with you tonight. Would you come line across the front of this church? Guys, y'all sing. Keep it going. Worship the Lord. Those that are praying on the platform, you keep praying. If you want to come to this altar and pray, come to this altar and pray. If you want to stand and raise your hands and pray, stand and raise your hands and pray. Come on, preachers, and help me tonight.
to be bold and courageous and follow the way. Child of God, remember the family is the Lord. And there's anybody here who's found him faithful. Anybody here who knows he's able. Say it. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire. I've been 
set free. Pardon me, I'm going with all the habits we believe. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I have been loose, I've been set free. Pardon me of all the water and the jubilee. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord, deliver me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Well, I'm a little tired of the devil's game, keeping me in bondage to my thoughts and shame. I deserve better. I won't go another day. I'm here to claim deliverance in Jesus' name. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Aren't you glad we don't have to stay in Moab? Amen. If you're not at the house of bread, you need to be on your way to the house of bread. Amen. I'm thankful tonight I don't have to stay in that place called Moab. Stand with me around this place tonight. Wow, it's hard to believe we've come to the end of Thursday night. It seems like we just got started, Brother Jarman. I'm ready to see what God's going to do tomorrow night. Amen. Bring somebody with you. Pray highly favored makes it in on time and things go well and they get here. Pray the man of God gets a hold of the mind of God tomorrow. 
Pray that you're here in your spot doing what God's called you to do. I'd hate for you to miss church on a Friday night and the Holy Ghost want to touch you. Amen? Ooh, that'd be bad. Amen? Let's get here. Young people, you'll have school tomorrow. Sleep in until about 10. And then get up, pray through. Get up and pray through and get here ready to have your shout on tomorrow night. Amen? 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 Y'all think I'm kidding. Have it wrapped up tight tomorrow night. It's Friday night. Father, help me before I get in trouble tonight. Go with us. Guide us. Give us rest. Give us favor and joy. Bring us back tomorrow night where we can one more time lift up the name of a living Lord. We'll forever give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and the church said amen. Amen. Shake hands with those around you. Make sure you speak to our evangelist in the foyer.